Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we have some very interesting news going on in the Middle East from Israel all the way up into Turkey, Iraq, etc. Uh, the title of the news broadcast does not reflect everything that we're going to be speaking about today. The United States sits back while Turkey obliterates the U.S. ally, the Kurds. Uh, also, oil has been discovered near the Dead Sea, a huge uh, a, a mass of oil that has been discovered there. I believe it is underestimated how much is there because of security concerns for Israel, but we'll be going to that in just a moment here. Uh, let's get right into our news broadcast here. We have uh, one killed, 23 injured, an explosion that rocks the police headquarters uh, in the uh, Gaznintep, Turkey. RT News is reporting on this here. Uh, we'll be playing this little video here that RT has put out here as well. It says at least one police officer has been killed after a bomb exploded near police headquarters uh, in the Turkish city of Gaziantep, according to the city's governor. At least 23 people have been reportedly injured in the blast. Footage from the broadcast at Haven Turk showed pieces of wrecked vehicle near the gates of the station. Glass from windows in the buildings in the vicinity have also been shattered while all the roads in the area have been closed for security purposes. Um, now, no doubt, Turkey is uh, definitely going to blame the Kurds for this. This is one of the reasons why uh, Turkey has been on its major campaign in obliterating the Kurdish people, which was once an American ally and supposedly still is an American ally. But I guess with the U.S. having bases in Turkey, the U.S. doesn't want to upset the status quo with the Turkish people. So therefore, or Erdogan, I might uh, add. So therefore, they will just sit back and obey Erdogan and do what he would like so that they don't uh, get to have to put their own forces in some other country. Not to mention they pretty much have the entire region sewed up as it is. Uh, anyway, Ankara conducts air raids on Kurdish posi positions in Iraq and southeast Turkey, according to RT News today. 20 Turkish jets have carried out multiple airstrikes against the Kurdistan Workers' Party fighters in southeastern Turkey and northern Iraq, reportedly destroying Kurdish fighters' posts. Four uh, F-16s and, and, F and F-14s, four f 4 Jets carried out the raids on alleged PKK positions in Kandil, uh, Hakuk, and uh, Vesin in northern Iraq between 11 p.m. and 1.40 a.m., Turkish General Staff announced in a statement on Saturday. Further announcement, two F-4 warplanes from Dirabakir Air, Air Base also targeted the rural uh, Ganyakam area on the southeastern province of Sernak, Turkey, according to Reuters. Sources the planes targeted Kurdish foods and weapons storage facilities. This also reminds me, every time I see the F-4 fighter mentioned there about Brother Gary Lowry, a prophecy he made a couple of years ago, that an F-4 would crash in the mountains near Israel, which would escalate a war with Israel. Uh, of course, there's two countries, it's Syria and uh, Turkey, that still use the F-4 uh, fighter jets there. Uh, can't say that the prophecy is so, but I, it just always brings back that memory. Continuing on in the same article, it says Turkish security forces have been trying to clear southeastern towns and cities of PKK members since last July when a two-year ceasefire collapsed by August. An estimated 10,000 Turkish troops armed with heavy weapons, armored vehicles, including tanks, were deployed in southeastern provinces while all media and NGOs were kicked out. The onslaught has also spilled into the neighboring countries of Syria and Iraq. As we remember, we see that the, uh, the Turkish military went in with tanks into Nineveh, uh, right there, uh, the, the Turkish city there, uh, very much angered the Iraqis that they had entered into their country. But ironically, if you watch the video footage there, we saw that uh, the Iraqi, or excuse me, the Turkish forces had U.S. Navy SEALs among their ranks there in this particular attack. So uh, the Iraq, uh, Iraqi uh, government is not going to say a whole lot in the case when the U.S. is fighting there with them. 
uh, but it does create a tremendous amount of tensions and it is a shame on the American people that they are fighting with the Turkish forces against the Kurdish people who they use to justify or partially to justify their reasoning for going into Iraq in the first place. And of course the Kurdish forces have been the best fighters against ISIS. But then again, what can you expect? You have to remember Turkey arms ISIS and the U.S. sits back and allows it and the U.S. also helped to arm ISIS in the very beginning of this battle as well as training them in the country of Jordan. Uh, anyway, so these have been very serious issues here that have happened. Tensions have, according to RT, tensions have been rising between Ankara and Baghdad after Turkey deployed hundreds of troops equipped with tanks and artillery into Iraq's northern Nineveh uh, governorate last December, saying they will train forces battling Islamic State. Well, they weren't training. They were in there obliterating uh, anybody that was part of the Kurdish uh, people there. Also, yesterday in Baghdad, a state of emergency was declared after supporters of al-Sadar stormed the Green Zone. Those of you that do not remember the Green Zone, this was set up by the United States in order to protect American personnel and uh, the, the, the government there that was uh, fighting uh, in Iraq. They set up this huge uh, walls, these barriers, concrete barriers. Uh, while we kind of go over the, the, the report here, let me just share with you this video on this footage here. Um, well, thought it would play, maybe it won't, but anyway, uh, they actually tear the wall down. Uh, very, very interesting. They're able to bring down this huge concrete barrier. Supporters of Sadir, whose fighters once controlled swaths of Baghdad and helped defend the capital from ISIS, have been demonstrating for weeks at the gates of the Green Zone, responding uh, to their leader's call to pressure the government to reform. Saturday was the first time the, pro uh, the protesters breached the compound's walls. Uh, Sadar so called on his followers to leave the parliament building and instead start a sit-in on the ground festivities square, which is also inside the Green Zone. Iraqi security forces fired tear gas and bullets in the air to prevent the protesters from entering the Green Zone near the U.S. Embassy, police sources told Reuters. But Prime Minister Hadir al-Abadi said later Saturday that the security situation in Baghdad was under control and asked demonstrators to return to the designated protest. From what we could see in some of the reports there as well, uh, when they were inside, they were chanting, we are here peacefully, we are here peacefully. We have not seen in any of the video footage anything as far as from a violent standpoint there. Uh, according to the Turkish authorities, uh, this is on Ynet News, Israeli embassy uh, attack in Rome and was foiled by the Italian authorities. There were plans by six ISIS operatives working there in uh, Italy to attack both the, uh, the Israeli embassy and the Vatican, according to the reports. Italian authorities have thwarted an ISIS attack in Italy. Amongst the targets were the Israeli embassy in Rome and the Vatican. Two members of the cell have been already moved to ISIS-controlled territory. Arrest warrants were issued for six people affiliated with the ISIS uh, on Thursday evening, four of which plan to attack the Israeli embassy in Rome and the Vatican. Milan prosecutor Mariazzo Romano told reporters that the investigation intercepted the communications from within ISIS-held territory, ordering, ordering attacks in Italy with particular attention to the city of Rome and focusing on Holy Year pilgrimage now underway. Uh, so it's definitely coming. They're, they definitely have targeted these two places. And uh, uh, more so, you can, you can count on something will end up happening to the Vatican. It may justify why the Vatican would like to build uh, help or help build the third temple. And we are holding to the possibility that that third temple may very well be built instead of on the Temple Mount. They may end up opting for allowing the third temple to be built right there on the Catholic property just outside of the Israeli, uh, excuse me, outside right there off of Mount Zion. This may be too why we have seen the push by different people. Chuck Missler has joined into this as well as uh, his friend there, um, Bob Cornuke, and I've spoken with Bob Cornuke extensively on the phone before on another issue there uh, regarding the book I'd written. And, uh, but anyway, Bob Cornuke and Chuck Missler, this was uh, first brought out by another man, 
uh, that actually sent me the documentary he did trying to support the idea that the temple was originally built uh, over on Mount Zion. The dirt had been taken away and used to build up the Temple Mount. Uh, whether this is true or not, I cannot definitively say, but I know there's been a lot of archaeological work going on uh, near uh, the, the city of David, as it's called, and I would say that this was all inside the ancient walls of Israel at one time, so there is some support for the idea. Uh, and one of the biggest things that I can see, though, is the Vatican owning all this property. It is vacant land, both south and north of their particular compound that they have there for where they say that uh, Yeshua, uh, where Caiaphas' house was, uh, and all the area north of that, and that is still open. This may be where they decide to build it, and they may even try to, in archaeological work, prove that it was actually standing there. Interesting how the Vatican can control so much of what will happen in Israel. So that's a very interesting expectation, and you might look at that. I'll put that here on the screen for you as, we're, as, we're, as we've been speaking about it there. Uh, you can see the aerial view outside. Notice this now. The aerial view outside of, of the uh, wall there, uh, that would be the southern side of Israel, on Mount Zion, uh, and just across from the, 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 the site of David's tomb, the Last Supper there, all that area there is, is where they're believing that the temple actually stood before. This is in that new, uh, new thing that they're trying to push through. Bob Cornuk and Chuck Missler and others uh, like them are trying to push this. I'm concerned that it is a Vatican agenda to get the control of building the third temple on Vatican-owned property. Could you just imagine that? The Pope would definitely get to be all up in that. Uh, another interesting thing, oil deposit has been discovered near the Dead Sea. Of course, there's been drilling for that all the way back since 2008, looking for it. They have found it once before, but it's hit the news again on Israel National News. It says that the oil deposit was discovered near the Dead Sea. It does remind me of an Eskimo woman who did a prophecy back in the late 1800s. I believe she was born in 1877. And she prophesied that Israel would discover huge oil reserve near the Dead Sea. And Israel was not even a nation at the time. Interesting how she worded that. Uh, anyway, the article states that surveyors struck oil in Israel with an old deposit discovered near the Dead Sea. Uh, excuse me, with an oil deposit discovered near the Dead Sea. On Sunday, the uh, Hatarium Consortium, named for the uh, Hatarium formation in the Dead Sea area, announced that a report from the uh, Dunmore Consulting Company had confirmed the presence of an oil reservoir in the area under license by uh, Hataruim. A geological survey conducted and the Halemasil drilling site located within Hataruim's 94 square kilometer or 36 square miles license estimated that there was between 7 and 11 million barrels of oil in the deposit worth some 1.2 to 1.8 billion shekels. That's $474 million. The Hatrim license area was first surveyed in 1995 when the Delic Group carried out the first drilling in the area. Despite evidence of oil, following up operations to confirm the presence of the oil deposit were not conducted for more than 20 years. Something they're sitting on no doubt. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live, giving you a little bit of insight what's happening in the Middle East. Got a very interesting program coming up for you here, uh, hopefully either Monday or Tuesday. By the latest, I can get this put together from biblical insights of what's happening and what's about to take place, especially where Babylon is concerned. New Babylon, that is, or the mystery Babylon that we're speaking about and the judgments that will follow. We'll kind of elaborate more on the message we did a couple of weeks ago there about Mystery Babylon. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.